So Time Magazine has released an article titled The 100 Best Fantasy Books of All Time. Obviously, that's going to spark a little bit of controversy throughout the reading and writing community. And I've seen some different takes on this. Some people aren't taking it seriously at all. Some people are outraged. Some people just find it annoying. So today we're going to talk about it. I'll warn you, I've had a cursory glance at this list from my phone at work the other day, but I haven't really gone through it. So you're getting a live in the moment reaction to this list. And there are some books, there are a lot of books on here that I have not read or I am familiar with or haven't finished, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to focus on the things that I've read or at least feel comfortable talking about in a way in which like, I feel like I understand the subject or the author or I'm, I'm just familiar with. So if I'm glossing over some of these that are really great books, don't worry about it. We're just going to look and react and discuss. So let's jump right into it. With the panel of leading fantasy authors, N.K. Jemison, Neil Gaiman, Sabah Tahir, uh, I, this was a bad idea reading these names, to, to, Tommy Adeyemi, Diana Gal, Gabaldon, George R. R. Martin, Cassandra Clare, and Marlon James. Time presents the most engaging, inventive, and influential works of fantasy fiction in chronological order beginning in the ninth century. Jesus, that is going back so far. So um, right off the bat, they're setting the precedent for what they're looking at. Engaging, inventive, and influential works of fantasy fiction. So just the most influential. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Arabian Nights, you know, that makes perfect sense. Um, I don't think, I didn't know that a lot of people thought of that as like just directly fantasy, but I guess it makes perfect sense. If they're starting in the ninth century, like obviously fantasy was a lot lower back then or different. I'm not super familiar with the series, but that makes perfect sense. Um, obviously, Alice in Wonderland making it on here is a pretty obvious choice. Very influential from the start. Through the Looking Glass, Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass being on it. It, it makes me kind of question like oh, two books in the same series. Is that are we doing two books in the same series on this list? I mean, that's fine, but I almost feel like a series alone could be encompassed as just being like, you know, the Alice in Wonderland series, not two, taking up two books on the list. I feel like that'd make room for a lot a lot more books, but I don't know. That's just me. Let's keep rolling. Um, Mary Poppins makes sense. Makes sense. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Okay, that that one makes a lot of sense. Right after it, we have the Voyage of the John Treader popping up again. Another C.S. Lewis book, and we're looking at um two books in a series being referenced yet again. I'm not sure. See, I'm seeing right now the Fellowship of the Ring is coming. Up next by J.R.R. Tolkien. I'm not sure how I feel about having singular books in a large series or even just a trilogy be the only books mentioned. I almost feel like they're just taking up a lot of space that could go to some really great works of fiction. I don't know. That's just me. Like The Lion, the Witch, and Wardrobe and The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Those are great books. Um, I, I love those books. I'm very familiar with the series. That being said, I don't see any more Maybe there, if you go down, there's more. No, it doesn't seem like it. Um, those seem to be the only two books so far, at least, that are from the Chronicles of Nar Narnia series that are on this list. And I'm not sure how I feel about that because, I I mean, I guess it is subjective. And maybe they're just looking at the ones that were the biggest, most popular books in the series. I don't really know exactly how those books sold. I know they sold well, but in regards to which ones sold the most. But I would I would have to say there were a good deal of books in that series that were a lot better, and I would think more influential to the genre. Um, that being said, both books are deeply iconic and I think deserve a spot on this list, but I would very much prefer uh, just the entire Chronicles of Narnia series be subbed in as just one entry on the list. Same thing goes down here for um, Tolkien, which is interesting because they literally put all three Tolkien books on here, just taking up three of the 100 spots on the list. I don't agree with this. Um, obviously, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is one of the most influential 
fantasy books series of all time. There's no debate about that. There's no question that these books were going to make it onto the list, but like we're just taking up we're just taking up a lot of room here. Um they're not even like they're not even like playing favorites being like, "Oh, well, this the two towers or the Return of the King definitely gets on." They're just like throwing them all in there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's not really anything to say about those three books making it on. Obviously, um, Grandpa Tolkien is going to make it onto the list. So going down a little more, James and the Giant Peach is on here. Roald Dahl, obvious pick. I'm totally okay with that one being on there. Anything about him making it through. And McCaffrey, Dragon Fight. Um, not super. I'm really not super into that series, uh, the Anne McCaffrey series. But that being said, it doesn't surprise me at all that the series is on there. And I do agree that it probably deserves a spot on the list. It's not something that I love a ton, but it was it was definitely an influential series. And I, I think this is this might be an instance where I believe she had a lot of books in that series. So that could be an instance where there's only one book on there. But if she, they had like given a bunch of the books from her series a spot on the list, like that would be just taking up so many spots. I don't understand why they're not just saying a series is great, because I think that the that her Anne McCaffrey series probably just deserves a spot as as a whole on the list. But I'm sounding like a broken record now. It's whatever. That's just my take on it. Um, a Wrinkle in Time, obvious classic. Um, God, that, that, I, have, I have memories of that story as a kid. Um, I feel like there's probably a lot of people that do. I'm not I'm not mad at either of those entries, A Wrinkle in Time or Dragonflight making it on there. Um the last unicorn yeah okay I, I can see that a wizard of earth sea i mean i'm gonna be honest i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna speak some heresy here i'm not a big ursula k Le Guin fan um i hear wizard of earth sea cited a lot um i didn't finish the book i have read some of her other books i got into them because of how iconic she is and how much people reference her and i definitely understand the influence that she had so i'm okay with her making it onto the list i'm okay with that because she's a deeply iconic writer to a lot of other people uh that being said wasn't my cup of tea but anyway moving on um blah 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 princess bride being the next majorly recognizable one uh william goldman absolutely phenomenal work is that fantasy though is is that a fantasy book i don't know i i guess i guess it is but like it's kind of it's kind of low fantasy right am i missing something i might it's been a long time since i read it but like am i missing something um makes sense though. i mean it's it is a classic book i don't know if it's a classic book to a lot of people like the movie is though i feel like the movie did a lot for that book i don't know if the book itself would go i don't know mm. I'm, i'll sit on the fence on that one tuck everlasting god i forget about that book that, that's the one where the guy like lives forever right yeah that's that's probably one of the earlier books that did that type of concept so that makes sense as to why it could be kind of on the frontier as far as that goes um, the BFG role of doll. It's different with doll because the, his books, I still feel like his books, I feel like authors, I feel like authors might would be the better way to go with this. I don't know. Is that just me? Like, I feel like doing like the hundred most influential authors of all time, uh, in fantasy might would be like a more cohesive list than just going over the, uh, the books because like we have role doll showing up like three pages back and now he's showing up again with the bfg obviously i think that both of the books probably just about any book that he has has deserves a spot on here so but like we're, he's just popping up all around taking up spots give it to the author rolling down on howl's moving castle i was I actually haven't read this book but i was just talking about the movie um that uh studio ghibli did uh, with someone the other day and that is a fantastic story i don't know how true the the movie is to the original story but i could definitely see if it's anything like the movie i could definitely see it making its way onto this list um red wall brian jacques i'm gonna assume that i said that right i'm really bad with names okay you should know if you follow me by you should know this by now not the greatest with names um but red wall absolute classic I'm, i have no problems with this being on here honestly so far this list is pretty solid um 
I'm really happy with everything I'm seeing and recognizing on here. Um, I mean, these are all classics. I feel like where the controversies are, are going to come in is with the newer stuff. Um, but yeah, Redwall, I have so many memories. Uh, I listened to that book as a child, um, that series on tape, like on a cassette tape that we got from the library. God, that makes me feel old. I'm not even old. And that makes me feel old. Uh, rolling further on down the eye of the world by Robert Jordan. Now, I'm going to be honest. I am not a Robert Jordan reader. I'm familiar with the series because it is so dang popular. Um, so it makes perfect sense that this makes it onto the list. I'm not I'm not at all mad at it. Um, I haven't read the books, but I've heard so much about them. They, they don't really resonate for me when I try to pick them up. I've tried to pick them up, tried to read the back covers, look into it. I've learned so much about through YouTubers. It's so popular on YouTube that I've learned so much about the series. That I definitely kind of understand what it's about and what Robert Jordan did. And I really appreciate that and would consider him obviously a giant in the space as anyone should. So I'm not mad about any of his books being on the list. However, I do think that a lot more of them should be there probably. So just picking one once again, feels a little weird. Next up on the list, we have Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Obviously, both of these authors are giants in the space, and we're getting really close to current times. That was really quick. This is what in the '90s, right? Um, ah, I, I guess this does deserve a place on the list. But once again, I feel like it'd be better understood if you just said Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, uh, hundred part of the 100 best authors of all time in fantasy. Just putting this book up there is kind of interesting because I feel like there are a few Gaiman books which they might end up on this list and probably plenty of Pratchett books that deserve a spot on this list. Choosing the one that they did together is interesting, but oh well, that's fine. I think Good Omens is a fantastic book. I laughed my butt off. I deeply enjoyed that book. Uh, so I'm not I'm not mad at it. Not at all. Uh, going down a bit, a bit, a bit. We have Tigana by Guy Gabriel K. Now, you guys know that I love Guy Gabriel K. And I think this book, this video is going to go up before my Tigana book of the week. But Tigana is my book of the week this week. Whatever the week that this video drops, Tigana is my book of the week. So I can talk all about my love for that in that video. But in short... I, I do think Tiana, Tigana is a great book and I, I could definitely see it. You know, I, I could see it as being like a classic fantasy novel. That being said, I don't know. I don't know that I would put it in the hundred best fantasy novels of all time. Maybe in my 100 best fantasy novels, but you know, just objectively, I don't know. Was it that influential? I guess I don't, I wasn't an adult when the book came out, so I don't know how influential it was, but maybe it was. Oh, here we go. The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. I, I am all here for this this choice. I can see the Subtle Knife book two in the series is right up there on the list. I am totally pumped for that. I love I'm a massive fan of Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy. And I think I, I think that if you can put like the Chronicles of Narnia books on this list, you absolutely have to put Pullman on the list. Um Right up next, Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Dude, I think I did a uh, book of the week on Neverwhere too. Fantastic fantasy book. I'm really happy with this list so far. Um, I'm going to move it a little bit faster because I'm getting a little rambly on all these and I get so long with it. I'm trying to keep these videos from being like super long. Uh, but yeah, definitely a fan of all three of these. Ella Enchanted makes sense. Uh, familiar with the story. I haven't read the book. Uh Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Interesting choice. Just the one book. I have not read the entire Harry Potter series. I've watched the movies. I don't think the movies are good. I'm not a big fan of the story, but I do recognize Rowling's of her effect, the effect that she had, the influence she had on both the middle grade and YA genres, as well as fantasy as a whole. So I'm not mad at the books making it on in any way. That being said, we're not even going to touch on the Rowling controversies as of late. I know a lot of people have kind of disowned her from fantasy, but we still have to acknowledge what her books did for the genre. So rolling on down a little bit, we have George R.R. R. Martin. Obviously, you had to have at least one Game of Thrones or as the nerds like to call it, Song of Ice and Fire books on here. Um, that being said, I have not gotten through that series. I'm not sure I'm ever going to. I, that, that man's got to finish his trilogy. 
I mean, his trilogy. Why did I say trilogy? He's got to finish his series before I'm going to take it seriously enough because they ruined that TV show so hard. And I know that it wasn't his fault, but it kind of is. He needed he should have just finished the books and then maybe they would have actually had an idea where to go with the story. Um, But it, it does make sense that a Martin book would make it on here. That being said, I mean, it's super it's probably super influential and inventive, I guess, for the genres. But I don't know that we should respect Martin the way that we do at this point, like as a whole, as a community until he finishes that darn series. Like, come on, dude. Uh, another Neil Gaiman entry here, Amer- American gods. Uh, I'm into it. I'm okay with it. I'm a big Neil Gaiman fan. It's not my favorite Gaiman book though. Um, I don't love American gods. I don't like the TV show at all. Not that we should count that, but I just think it's, it's an interesting one, but people love it. I mean, it is, it's probably like one of his most influential books in regards to how popular it is. So can't be mad at it. Um, another Pratchett book makes it on the list. Harry Potter and the half blood prince makes it on the list. Um, a couple Harry Potter books make sense. I'm getting really tired of multiple books by the same author showing up here. Cause I feel like there's just so many more people to appreciate, but that's just me. Um, coming in next, we have Mistborn, the final empire by Brandon Sanderson. My boy, my one of my favorite authors of all time, one of the most prosperous fantasy authors of my life. I mean, like for a living author that's still putting out books, he is absolutely destroying it. I'm, I enjoy most everything he puts out. And the man has had such an influence on me that God, I think that he is going to be a giant, giant, giant in the space over the next like even a, even 100 years. I think he'll be remembered in a way that a lot of the authors on this list might not um but yeah uh name of the wind by patrick rothfuss uh that book is really big um it's it's really big so i could see how it could be influential i think you're by putting it on the list you're giving a lot of you're giving a lot of influence to a series that's not finished. I'm not a big fan of this, like the series that aren't finished being on here. And I really wish that we were counting the entire series or the author, because like, I guess the name of the wind is a good book, but I don't know that it's like the, one of the greatest books of all time without the series, without knowing where the story goes. I don't know that it's a cohesive story enough to be like that great as just a book on its own. I really did enjoy the book, but it has, it does have a lot of its own problems. I feel like it's very subjective whether you like it. So putting it on this list is a little bit questionable in my opinion. That being said, I do think Rothfuss's world building ability, um, the magic systems he comes up with are absolutely fantastic. Um, so I could see how maybe his writing ability on a technical level, his creative imagination could be very influential to make it onto the list, but finish the series, dude, just finish the series. He's, he's getting a little sketch with how he's, he's sitting on that third book. But, um, next up city of glass by Cassandra Clare. I've heard so much about this series. I, I, I'm going to be honest, or I don't even know if it's a series. I need to read this book. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I don't know if it goes on there. I've heard a lot about it, but that's not a very great cover. I'm not even going to lie. Like if you're going to, if you're going to write one of the hundred best fantasy novels of all time, you need a better cover than that. It's just me. But, um, I can't, I can't really complain. Um, as we get into like these more current books, I do think things are starting to get a little more questionable because I don't know that you can start ranking things that have came out within the past, like 10 years as one of the best of all time. I don't, I don't know about that. Um, Going down a little bit, we have some N.K. Jemisin work. I have not read The 100,000 Kingdoms. Uh, I should. I should read some of her older series. Um, I have read the fifth season, and that series was it, the Broken Earth series. Um, won a lot of awards. She is a fantastic writer. I, I, I think she's a bit overrated. I'm not going to lie. A bit overrated. That being said, when I say overrated, I think that people have built a pedestal so high for her that for me coming in, being aware of that pedestal, it is a little bit harder to get on board as her being like the giant that she is. That being said, uh, her skill with words is is it's hard to compare anyone else to her. She she definitely does a great job on that front. Um in, in regards to the Broken Earth trilogy, um, it was very emotional. Um, I, I think she has a lot of great ideas and a lot of great things to say. 
and she writes beautifully. I'm not sure how I feel about her plotting. So I, I actually, now that I'm looking at it, I don't know why I haven't read the hundred thousand kingdoms. So I'm going to put that on my TBR and honestly read it soon and maybe do some books, maybe do some videos on it. You know, we'll see. Um, down a little more. Not, I don't, uh, the next one that I'm familiar with would be the night circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I don't know about this. Uh, and I say this as, as someone who hasn't read the book. That being said, I have read her second book, the starless sea. And I, I think, I think things start to get questionable as we get into the more current books, because um, the Starless Sea was a really enjoyable book to read. She writes beautifully. Morganstern writes beautifully. However, it is incredibly, incredibly self-indulgent work. And I think you start to get a little bit more political when you start putting books like this onto this list. Because I just I don't know that that's one of the most influential books of all time. I don't know, dude. I, I know it, it was a popular book, but I don't know that she's really proven herself yet as a as, as a giant author author she's definitely proven herself as a good author and i'm interested in the next book she reads i should probably pick up the night circus she has a really interesting story and she is a likable author but i don't i don't know if we're there yet um similar i have similar feelings towards the song of achilles um yeah going down a bit the bone clocks i've heard a lot about that book i i would like to read that book there's a lot of books that i should just put on my list here um, however, haven't read it. Don't know what to say about it. Uh, the fifth season, just like I was talking about, um, NK Jemison makes it on the list. A little questionable that we've got two different series on this list. Like, let's just put NK Jemison on the list so we can have more books. But that's just me. Um, the Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. 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 Um, where have I heard that name? I feel like I should, I'm supposed to read a book of his or have I read a book of his? That's my question. Maybe not. I don't know. Not sure. Not sure. I'm not going to speak on it. Um, have heard the name. Didn't know he had written one of the hundred best books of all time though. So that's just me. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Heard great things about this author. Um, it pops up everywhere. So I'm not really going to judge it. It's because it's on this list. It should probably go on my to be read list, but, um, Definitely an interesting choice. It's a very popular book, but I feel like as we get deeper and deeper into the newer releases, like things that were released in the past like 10 years, I think it becomes more of a popularity contest. And maybe that's what it has been from the start. But um, at least a lot of the earlier books, I guess it's hard to judge these early books, or these new books as best of all time books, because the earlier books were old enough that we we've seen the proof. The proof is in the pudding. We've seen the influence that those books had here. I don't know that you can really start to make these types of judgments. That's just me. I feel like you might could have found a hundred books within the past hundred years and not included anything after the two thousands and still had a hundred of the most influential best fantasy novels of all time. Eh, I don't know. That's just me though. Rolling down a bit. We're getting closer to the end. Um, I, honestly, I don't read that much contemporary fantasy and i really need to so i'm gonna put a lot of these books on my to be read list that being said uh, i'm not gonna be as familiar with some more of them we've got ken Liu coming in again um the jade city by fondly that is like number one on my to be read list um i have it i have began the book um that being said i didn't I, once again i did not know that it was going to be one of the best fantasy novels of all time that's definitely an interesting choice i've heard a lot about it i've listened to interviews with the author i'm familiar with the main plot i not i don't know spoilers so we'll see how it goes i've literally started the book i have it on my kindle i'm just working through other books right now um but it's definitely an interesting choice because i feel like it's an interesting series that's progressing and i'm i'm excited to get into it and i think it's probably going to be a good book and a great series however 100 best fantasy books of all time don't know nk jemison other i mean she won an award for every one of these books in the uh broken earth trilogy so i mean you can't complain about her being on the list not sure how i feel about children of blood and bone making onto this list i've heard a lot about that series and i heard so much about it that i dipped my toe back into the sort of ya genre because I've been trying to read not as much why I, I did when I was younger. Um, but I've kind of gotten tired of the genre and a lot of its tropes and writing styles. 
So I, I dipped my toes back in though for that book because I'd heard so much about it. And I'm going to be honest, I was not impressed. I was not into it in the least. Uh, I'm, it's, I'm sure it's a good novel. It was, it was decently written, um, but it was not, I, I was not in any way, shape or form like hooked into it. Like it was not in any way like a prestigiously written book, like just beautifully written, like by a master. It was like, Oh, you know, a new author is, is writing a, a book that's getting kind of popular because it's hip with the kids. Then don't, don't know how I feel about it. Um, Cersei, Madeline Miller heard a lot about this book. I have it started it. Eh, wasn't that into it. Not a big fan. However, I get why a lot of people like it. Um, it has some interesting concepts and political implications. I know people, as we get on this list, I feel like there are going to be a lot more politics involved in, involved in cultural relevance. Um, and I'm not totally mad about that because a lot of these books have some good things to say. However, I think that some of these books may be making it on here because of what they have to say, not really how well they were written or how great of a book they are. Um, Empire of Sand, I've heard a lot about that book. Haven't read it. The Poppy War, as you guys know, I've done a book of the week on it. I am a big fan of RF Kwong. Um, I think I saw from her Twitter that the Dragon Republic book two in the series is on this list as well. So definitely not, not mad at it being on the list. However, I think we have to see how the Burning God comes out book three in the series, which I think comes out this year, like within the next month or two. I think we need to see how that comes out to really judge. Um, I think the series might would end up on a list like this, but the Poppy War, I don't know if the book itself really just is like one of the hundred best books of all time. Does that make sense? Like, I think the series could be one of the best of all time, but it's definitely not like super high on the list. Like we got to see. I, th I think I think that Kwong has a lot further to go in her career. And if she continues on the trajectory that she's on, I think that everything she does after the Poppy War could be far better than the Poppy War trilogy. And that's saying a lot because I love the Poppy War trilogy so far. I, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, Going down further, we're almost to the end here. Um, There's our Dragon Republic. Okay with it. That is, I think the Dragon Republic as a book is better than uh, Poppy War in some ways. Uh, It has a few problems with it, but... The Poppy War kind of The Poppy War is a better structured book, but The Dragon Republic is a, a more mature book. Does that make sense? Um Children of Virtue and Vengeance, another book by Adeyemi in the same. I hope I said that right. I always get so nervous when I pronounce names. <laughs> um I mean whatever, another book on the list from her um running out the end of the list this is where okay this is it right here we end here not familiar with a lot of these books so i'm not i'm not going to say anything on them i've already spent enough time here the rage of dragons by evan winter has made it on this list and this is where my main gripe with the entire list comes in this is a brand new book it's been out for like a couple years but it's really only just now getting steam as well as the steam that it's getting is kind of questionable to me. Um, I really enjoy the book and I recommend it. I recommended it uh, as a book of the week. That being said, it does have problems and I think it's a great read and I think I'm very interested to see where the trilogy goes. I think it could be an, a really epic trilogy that ties up in a really awesome way. And I think the second and third book, I have not read the second one yet, could be better, far better than the first book. I feel like the first book is just dipping its toes in the water. And there's a lot more to do here and a lot more for Winter to grow as an author. So I'm really, really unsure about putting already putting that the first book in a series. that's not even close to finish yet. I think it's a four book series that he signed for. Um, I'm really not sure about putting that on a 100 best books of all time. I think I feel like they tried really hard with this list to include more current books when I feel like they would have been better relying on the classics. Uh, this entire latter half of the of the list is it gets to where it just feels like it's just playing favorites and whoever had whoever wrote about the most culturally relevant topics at the time 
made it onto the list. I don't I don't know that this this list seems to be judged by the writing ability alone or the influence or specifically just how inventive the series are. Like, I feel like a lot of these are I mean, you could say that they're inventive. I mean, you could. But like, I feel like you're selling for this list. You're selling the Rage of Dragons just on the world building alone, which had like one or two unique elements to it. But it wasn't that unique or exciting as a whole. Uh, I really enjoyed it, but I don't I don't know. So, yeah. And that honestly, my take on why the Rage of Dragons is, is on the list kind of encompasses my whole view of this list um in closing this video is getting really long so i'll wrap it up uh i don't know i don't i don't know i can definitely see why it's controversial it's not as controversial as i expected that being said obviously there are gonna be a lot of books that i haven't read or even heard of on the list so i mean more power to every author that has made it onto this list and in the end reading is subjective but uh it was pretty pretty ballsy for a time to put out a list like this because they knew they were going to ruffle some feathers. And that's probably why they put it out. They they knew that it would get the clicks. And I mean, I don't know that anyone writing for time is going to is someone I would trust with like best fantasy. But I thought they did a decent job with the list. It just gets a little questionable towards the end. Um, overall, though, not too mad at it to each their own um a lot of these books even the ones that i don't really agree with uh are very popular even if i don't agree with them being as popular as they are or ha as hailed as they are as fantastic books um i mean everyone has their own opinions but this has been my i guess recap of the time 100 best fantasy books of all times list of all times of all time of all times of all times i don't know i don't know how I think you can say that either way. Anyway, ignore that. If you guys enjoyed hanging out with me and checking out this list and hearing my thoughts on it, let me know. This is a new type of content. Um, I'm experimenting with different ideas and ways to get more videos out to you guys. So if you enjoy it, hit the like button. If you made it this far, subscribe to the channel and let me know what you want to see in the future. And I will continue to try and put out content that you guys enjoy. Otherwise... I'll see you guys in the next video.